I'm about four hours into this trip and this test, and I have to say the Polestar 4 has impressed me today, but more on that later in this video. I'm traveling to Spain in a few weeks to do warm weather testing because it's still cold despite it being sunny here in Norway with the Polestar 4, Polestar 3, Volvo EX90, and hopefully the Audi A6 e-tron and also Porsche. Macan. So if you want to support that trip, there's a GoFundMe down below because I'm flying out me and a videographer for about a week to do intensive testing. It's not a vacation. So I do appreciate any help from you guys, any support for us on that trip because it's going to cost me a lot of money to travel down there to bring warm weather testing to you guys when it's still cold here in Norway so we don't have to wait until the summer. So thank you very much guys. Thank you so much for all the support. Now on with the video. Today we are once again putting the Polestar 4 through arguably the hardest test we do here on the channel. Not only are we measuring and ranking the car based on how many minutes it has to charge to cover the 610 km route, but this test is designed to reveal an EV's flaws and issues and my god did we uncover issues on just about every level the last time we tested this car back in November of 2024. Since then though, the Polestar 4 has gotten a software update called P4.2.1 that should have fixed most of the issues and improved a lot of the problems this car exhibited in the past. So I'm pretty excited to put all of this to the test today and see if the Polestar 4 is finally the car it should have been at launch. So as fast as we hit 100% charge, I disconnected and made my way southward from Oslo towards Kristiansand in the south of Norway on this beautiful and sunny day. You join me on the road after about an hour of driving. The last time I tested the Polestar 4 in my long trip test, it was possibly the worst performing car ever. I mean, there were so many problems, not only with the ADAS, with the charging, but also with the infotainment system, with the route planner. Yeah, pretty terrible results. Uh, go check that video out. I'm gonna link it down below to see how bad it really can go. And in my range test of this specific car with the new software 4.2.1, I said that the ADAS was basically 95% there, that they have fixed all the issues. I'm going to back pedal just a little bit on that statement because after I filmed that video, I actually took this car to Gulskjelle for a Polestar experience uh, or for a Polestar um, event called the Polestar Winter Expedition. I'm going to link that video down below. Got to drive this on an ice track and, and stuff like that. But then I got to drive this car, you know, for three hours up to the mountains and then down on two lane uh, country roads. And the ADAS works not as good on those types of road as it does on the motorway and i have to say that lane centering and when the car is in the lane it's so confidence inspiring even on country roads like there's no issues with that but the issue with this car is still the delay from engaging the adaptive cruise control or the pilot assist until it engages and then you know increasing and reducing the speed as you'll do a lot on norwegian country roads and also toggling between pilot assist and normal adaptive cruise, you have to double tap the, uh, at the icon here to go from pilot assist to adaptive cruise and then tap it once to go back. I wish it was just a toggle using the D-pad air go right, right and left because sometimes it's, it's a little bit confusing, especially if you're tired and it always defaults to pilot assist. And sometimes like on country roads, you don't want to use pilot assist. So when you engage it and disengage it, you, you also have to do this dance of button pressing, delays. It's just a little bit cumbersome and more complicated than it needs to be. But other than that, lane centering is perfect. There's no phantom braking. I pass a lot of trucks, you know, in the left lane with trucks in the right lane. There's no hesitation. All of that is fine. And also, if I'm a little bit too harsh now and I change lanes without using the blinkers, it will disengage auto stare, which is fine. It doesn't disengage the whole system. Sometimes it does that. For the most time, it doesn't. But what's really nice is that that chime, that bing you got every time before it engages and disengages, that isn't there anymore. So I'm going to back pedal a little bit. I'm going to say that on the motorway is actually really nice to use, but on country roads, it's not as good as it is here on the motorway. So maybe it's 80% there. There's still, you know, the delays to work with. And also I'm going to show you if I'm 
already putting pressure to change lanes and then I, you know, I, I pull the indicator. There's like this hesitation where the car just breaks a little bit and doesn't know what to do. It's weird. And also here, that was fine, but a lot of times when the car re-engages the lane centering, like it disengages now for changing lanes, it like snaps into place. There's a little bit, that wasn't bad, but many times it is really, really strong. So it's not smooth and refined like in the Polestar 2 or in the Polestar 3, but it is a lot better than what it was. So after about an hour on the road, this beautiful, beautiful day, I mean, this is, yeah, spring is soon here. It's eight degrees Celsius outside now, so not, it's a little bit cold. But after about an hour on the road, our average consumption is right below 25 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So it's looking good today. I'm hoping that preconditioning is going to work because that should be fixed now with software 4.2.1 and really see how this car can perform as intended on the long trip test. As the hours went on and we got closer and closer to Christian Sun, the Polestar really started to shine. The level of comfort, quietness and refinement is hard to match at this price point. Along with an easy to use infotainment system and a very good Harman Kardon stereo, I was having a great time road tripping the 4 on this sunny Saturday. I was really, really starting to like this car more and more. Welcome to Christian San, which is our halfway point. So what is interesting is that we have now arrived here with, let's check, we're going to continue on the route, 32% stated charge. So the car estimated when we left Schleppenen earlier today or Oslo, 30% stated charge. And then it crept up to 31 and then to 32 and then down to 31, but stayed around 31 for the longest time. And we arrived here with 32%. So a lot more accurate than when we drove this car back in late November. I think the car was stating that we would arrive here with 29% stated charge, but we arrived with 22% stated charge. Also the wind, uh, as I showed you earlier, it, we had you know a, a crosswind for the most part of the trip. So I'm pretty confident that we're gonna be able to trust the route planner today. So the next, next task is arriving at the charters and also an update guys after 301 kilometers our average consumption is 22.4 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers has so dropped quite a bit and that is very nice also the temperature is very pleasant now the weather is great so i mean the conditions are quite a bit better than, better than when we drove this car back in late uh, november though the temperatures are not that much higher but the roads have been dry so i put the ionity charters in bruklandsai into the navigation system 111 kilometers the car says we're going to get there with six percent stated charge an hour and 40 minutes so we should have enough time for the car to precondition and yeah for us to just roll on i may have said it already but the polestar 4 long range dual motor is very comfortable in the suspension i've been driving the car in the softest setting today and also it is very quiet, especially at speed. One of the quietest cars I've tested here on the channel. So in my range test, I've started to do instrumented testing. So if you wanna see how this car stacks up against other electric cars in the chart to see you know, how much noise is generated in decibel, go check out my range test. But we're now here exiting and the weather, the weather today is so nice. So we're gonna to go to the Ionity charters up here and the car says we're gonna arrive with 5% here, but we are at 6% stated charge in the display. So it remains to be seen, will it be 5% or 6% once we get to the charters, like 100 meters over here. Okay, so we're here, we have arrived and we have arrived with 6% stated charge. So I'm gonna grab the camera for you guys so you can, guys can see that we have 6% stated charge left. Uh, 24 kilometers of range according to the car and we're also navigated to the next stop right and the car wants us to charge for I think uh, 34 minutes uh, and then we'll arrive with 29 percent stated charge I think that is way too much um, I think we can charge until the car says we're gonna arrive there with like 10 15 percent because today the uh, 
Route Planner has, has been super accurate, so I feel I can trust it, but we want, you know, just a safety buffer in case, you know, a road gets closed or we have to do a detour. But yeah, this car, compared to when I drove it in uh, late November, is so different now. Not only is the Atis better, but also you can trust the Route Planner, which is, well, essential for an electric car. So let's hop out now, connect and see if we can get close to that claim charging speed and to see if preconditioning now works. The Polestar 4 has its charge port here on the rear three quarter on the driver's side. And we're now at 6% state of charge. So we should be able to get 200 kilowatts of peak charging speed. So this charger should be able to deliver 200 kilowatts. The last time I tested this car, when we didn't have preconditioning, it was a little bit colder and we got like 140 kilowatts. We're already above that, so hopefully it's gonna climb to that 100 and, uh, or 200 kilowatts. And that's gonna be interesting because hopefully we're gonna have a nice and, and quick charging session. I think the last time I tested this car, we charged uh, for like 33 or 34 minutes, not getting that charging speed. But now that we're a lot further down the road, a lot better efficiency, we're not gonna have to charge as much. And also we can you know, trust the navigation system now so 193 kilowatts okay that is close enough 194 we may have to wait until we're over 10 percent uh, to get that 200 kilowatts but i'm going to show you something guys which is unfortunate that they still haven't updated with this latest software and that is look at this there is no kilowatt readout in the display only amps and voltage which is really weird why doesn't give the why doesn't the car give us the kilowatt readout so let's hop out now and see maybe if we're gonna get any close to that 200 kilowatts no 194 only but okay that is close enough i think we could be happy with that and let's see how fast we'll be able to get to the charge we need to get back to where we started as soon as we charged to 60%, I disconnected and headed back towards the goal line in Oslo. When I tested the Polestar 4 back in November, we weren't even able to get back to our starting point, even though we charged until we had a buffer of 10%. So just to be on the safe side, I charged to a little bit bigger buffer this time. But as the evening crept up and we got closer and closer to Oslo, it was very apparent that this time, things would be very different. Welcome back to ESSO in Schleppenden, where we started this long trip test earlier today. And guys, we're back before it's dark outside. So the sun has set, it's not on the horizon anymore, but it's still light out, which is pretty awesome. And as the weeks now progress, the days are just gonna get longer and longer. So I can't wait for that. And suddenly it's, it's summer, right? So, so yeah, so we arrived here with a massive, 15% state of charge and we left as you know when the car said we were going to ride with 15% state of charge so that is awesome today we've tested the wrap planner several times and it has been super accurate so that seems to be fixed with this Polestar 4 and also well we didn't reach that peak charging speed of 200 kilowatts but we managed 194 kilowatts so that is pretty pretty solid and other issues with ADAS have been improved so overall this is a success and i am very impressed with this polestar 4. the seats are great the ride is great the steer is great the cabin is great this is an awesome long trip car and average consumption not bad either 22.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers for being such a big vehicle and temperatures today between 8 and 11 degrees celsius but dry roads and dry conditions so so pretty decent conditions but you guys are here at the end of the video because you want to know how many minutes we had to charge with this car today to be able to travel the 610 kilometer long route well the last time we tested this car, though that was a performance model and the conditions were a little bit worse, we had like damp and slushy roads outside and also a little bit colder. The charging time that day was 33 minutes and we weren't even able to get back to where we were supposed to. So possibly even longer if we were able to complete the trip. So the Polestar 4 long range dual motor non-performance on 20 inch wheels under today's conditions with software for 
the 2.1, yeah, a lot of caveats, completed the long trip test with a charging time of only, well, I have to check because I haven't checked actually. <laughs> yeah, we charged for a total of 20 minutes, but we have to correct the time because we arrived here with 15% stated charge. That means after correction, charging to 45% for a total charging time of 13 minutes. 13, one, three. That is impressive. That is like almost one third the charging time, shaving off 20 minutes off that charging time. And now after having tested more than 100 cars in the long trip test, I've now decided to divide the results into charge based on the temperature. And I haven't tested any vehicle under these mild temperatures after I started dividing them. So I actually don't know the results, but I think 30 minutes is towards the top. I think the re record is like the Porsche uh, Taycan 4S with like six or seven minutes, but that was done, you know, summer conditions. So under these types of conditions, that is a pretty decent time, and especially for being a car on a 400 volt architecture. So yeah, the Polestar 4 has impressed on so many levels and is finally the car it should have been at launch. But as they say, better late than never. And this late is pretty awesome. So guys, let me know what you think of the results of the Polestar 4 in today's test. Are you satisfied or do you think it should have done better? Let me know in the comment section down below. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please drop me a thumbs up down below. And for more car content, as always, please subscribe. See you guys later. Goodbye.